Let us just open up in a word of prayer. Father God, we, we dedicate this morning back to you, O oh Lord. We thank you for being here with us, O oh God. We thank you for allowing us to worship and to sing to you, O oh Lord, and to rejoice in your presence. Lord, I pray that you will stay with us throughout the rest of the service. Let your presence be with us. Minister to your people, O oh Lord. Let your words that you want them to hear be spoken today, O oh Lord. Take away anything that's not needed to be said and add what you want to be said, O oh Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. My text is taken this morning from 1 Samuel chapter 1 to about 16, 17. Um, we're talking about a woman in the Bible who went through a lot, who suffered a lot, who felt that she was left out, but she had a secret. She had an answer, and her answer was to pray to God. And my topic this morning to you is, take it to the Lord in prayer. There was an old song like that, uh, and, and that's where I was deciding what my topic would be last night, and, and that song came to my mind when I was preparing the, this word, and that's what I wanted the text to be. Take it to the Lord in prayer. She had a problem. The scripture, let me tell you what it is. In the Old Testament, it was common for men to have more than one wife. Hannah was one of two wives from a man named Elkanah. Okay? The first wife had children with him. But Hannah was barren. Having children in those days was very important for their culture and for their custom. One had many children with him and one had none. But the thing that got Hannah was she wanted her own. She wanted something that the other woman had. Because in the Bible, it tells us she was provoked, she was belittled, and she was bullied because she couldn't do what the other woman did. Her husband, once a year, they used to go, uh, go worship at the temple, and he used to give her a double portion. Of, of the meat, because he loved her. He loved Hannah. So he wanted to show her how much he loved her, even though she didn't give him a child. And this went on for year after year. But Hannah took that personally. It was something she felt inside that she needed as a woman to comfort her and to fulfill that emptiness inside of her. Have you ever been that way? Is there something in your life that's missing? Is there something in your life that you've been asking for and it hasn't happened? Now the Bible said, this is the part that gets me. The Bible said that God, that God shut up, that God closed up, that God is preventing this. How is it that that is happening for everybody else and it's not happening for her? Barrenness is in her life. And it's something that she's asking for. She is not asking for something wrong. She's not asking for something that's impossible. She is seeing it day by day in other people's lives. Have you ever been through something like that? Something you need. Something you've been hurting for. This year you have seen people get what they asked for. And you are barren in certain areas that you've been begging for. And it's not something wrong you're asking for. It's something right. You're not trying to overdo it. You're not asking for too much. You're not trying to show off on anybody. It's something that's missing in your own life that you know that if you get it, it will please that area of your life. It will, it will stop the bleeding. And she's asking for that. And God shut up her womb. Sometimes, 
in our lives, our Christian walk. When it's not God's time, we cannot do anything about it. When it's not his time, because we don't know when his time is, that's not for us to see. What's for us to do is keep trusting until it happens, to keep praying until it happens, to keep believing until it happens. When it's the right time for it to happen, you can't stop it. Just you can't force it, you can't stop it. So when God says yes, no man can stop when God is ready to bless you for the thing you've been waiting on. She was barren. I don't know what it is in your life that you're missing. I don't know what the last three years since COVID-19 has been happening and the changes in your life. And there's a lack of something there. There's a lack and there's a need and it hasn't been happening to you. I don't know what it is. This is time for you to examine yourself. Examine what it is that you've been hurting. And it's not something wrong you've been asking for. She was not only barren, like that is not bad enough. She was belittled. She had to see day by day and had to hear in her head to wake up next to this lady, to wake up in the same house, to say, look what I have and look what you don't have. Look what I can give him and you can't. He is more happy with me than he is with you. He loves me more than he loves you because I can give him this and you can't do that. Imagine how she felt. Helpless. And it's not like she could have done something about it because when you're fed up and you have the ability to do it yourself, you will get up and do it. She couldn't help herself. And some of us are in that situation right now. The thing that we want, we can't help it. We can't move it faster. We can't push it to get it done quicker. It's not up to us. Barrenness belittled. That's a, that's a hard combination to swallow. It's not, a, it's not bad enough that you can't get the thing you need, but people are reminding you about it. Look what I have. What happened to the God you serve? You've been living a life godly for 25 years. You've been preaching the word your whole life. You've been ministering to people. You've been paying your tithes. Where is your God? I got it. And one thing you're asking your God for and he can't give it to you. People are going to say that to you as a Christian. They're going to watch your life and watch what you don't have and remind you. They may not tell you face to face, but I guarantee you they talk about it. Watch, look at his situation, look at her situation. And they pray every day. And they fast. And they pay their tithes. And they've been going to that church faithfully for 20 years. They hold their family prayer meetings. They talk to their children about what's right and what's wrong. And watch their life, they're still missing something. But we have it. I have it. Don't ever let people treat you like that. Because when things like that are happening in your life, there's something you can do. She, the Bible said, she stayed quiet. You are going to get provoked. You are going to get poked. You are going to get talked about. You are going to get lied about. People are going to say things that are totally not true about you while you're going through your worst. When you're already down, they still want to kick you. It's going to happen. Your life is not where it needs to be because you feel God is holding something back from you and your mind is sad and your mind is hurting. I want to tell you this morning that the story started like that, but the story does not end like that. Whatever you are going through right now is exactly what that is. You're going through it. You are not stuck in that situation forever. That is not a permanent address for your relationship. That is nothing. 
to be worried or concerned about because it's just a temporary thing in your life. Your timing is not God's timing. What feels like eternity for you, what feels like forever for you, is nothing for God. And the more you go through it, if it didn't happen for you today, you are one day closer for it happening. Encourage yourself. Well, you know, that miracle didn't happen today, but to, let's X this one off. That means it's just one day closer to happen. It's one day closer. It's going to come. It's going to come. And you know what she did? She stayed quiet. She never answered that woman. She never fought back. She never had to defend herself. She kept it to herself. She kept it to herself so much that she couldn't take it anymore. They were going up. Once a year, they go up to make their sacrifice. I think some believers take that scripture right there a little too, a little too personal. What I mean by that is they come to church once a year. Once a year. They say one prayer for the year. And then where is my miracle? One prayer. Why isn't it happening to me? Let's understand this. God can do a one prayer miracle. God can do anything he wants. He has the power to do it right now. He can reverse time. He can do what he wants. But something only happens by your actions and by your movement first. Amen. Some miracles only happen until you cry out. Yeah. Some chains only can be broken until you put the effort and time into it. Yeah. Some things can only happen by prayer and fasting. She said... This is what she said. <laughs> I tell you, prayer will make some people do some things. Prayer will break you. God will give you a situation where all you can do is pray. When the husband who has everything can't help you no more. When family who has always been there to support you can't help you no more because their hands are tied. When the best friend is not there to listen to you like you listen to them. When the job, the co-workers that you feel comfortable with, that you leave the house and you, you go there to escape. When those things don't work no more, there's one person you can go to. And that is your Heavenly Father. That is the promise you have. That any time, any situation, any circumstances, you can go to Him. Listen to what she said. She made a vow. Lord Almighty. She knows there's power in her God. She knows her God is almighty. Do you know that your God is almighty? We sing the songs. We give him praise. But do you actually know what you're saying? Do you know the power in your Jehovah Jireh? Do you know the words you're saying? When we sing those worship songs, when we lift up his name, she said, Lord Almighty, if, if you, Lord, would only look, all God has to do is just look at your situation. God don't have to leave heaven, come down to your bed while you're praying and touch you on the shoulder and say, hey, 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 look, I'm here. All he has to do is look at your problem and it can be solved. That's the power. And that's the faith she has. She said, Lord, if you will only look on your servant's misery. Look, Lord, look. She is telling him what is hurting her. Some of us sit in our sorrow, sit in our pain, and we just say a prayer like this. Well, Lord... If you want to fix it, fix it. And if not, well, it is what it is, and that's your will for me. No, she didn't take it like that. She didn't take it like that. And some of us, our prayer has to change. It has to become more personal. It has to be a one-on-one -on -one with you and God where the tears are falling. 
okay? And you're fed up of the hurt, and you're tired of the pain, and you're tired of seeing everybody's lives, the seeing the things you wanted play through in somebody else's life. But God is a good God. God is better than good. Look at your servant's misery. But not only look, Lord, remember me. I want you to pray that prayer this week. Lord, don't even, just, just don't look at my, just don't, don't look and leave it like that. Remember me, oh Lord. Remember me that I prayed to you. Remember that I was faithful, oh Lord. Remember that I gave when I had nothing. Remember that I blessed that family. Remember that I picked the phone up and encouraged someone when I needed the encouragement. Remember, oh Lord. Remember me, your servant, oh Lord. I am hurting. Help me now, oh Lord. It's not wrong to ask God like that. You're not yelling at God. You're crying out to him. He knows your heart. He knows the pain. If you remember me and not forget, I want to tell you, God, don't forget. God, don't forget. It might take longer. You might think he forgot. But God, don't forget anything. If you not forget your servant, but give her a son, a man-child, she's being specific in her prayer. She's telling him exactly what she wants. It's okay to do that. It's okay. And leave it up to God to answer it. It's okay to be clear in what you want. He wants to hear it. He knows what's best for you, but he wants to hear your voice. He wants to know your concerns. If you will give me this man child, I will give him back to you all the days of his life and no razor ever be used on his head. I, I, I love that, that part right there. Not the no razor would ever be on the head, but <laughs> no, no, I, I, I tried growing my hair long twice and I got threatened by my uncle. So <laughs> I said, well, I can't afford haircuts. He goes, Candace will give you one for free. You, you have no excuses. He said, Lord, if you give me this man child, I will give him back to you. Have you ever made a vow with God? Have you ever said these words, Lord, if you do this, I will do that. Lord, if you give me a job that I don't have to work on Sundays, I will be in church. Lord, you know I can barely pay my bills. If you give me a raise, I will increase my tithe. Lord, if you do this, I will do that. Lord, my marriage is on the rocks. Lord, if you step in and fix it, I will treat her better. I will treat him better. Lord, if you give me that child, I will bring him up in the house of the Lord. And God has answered your prayer. And God has heard you. Look back on your life. You know you have made a prayer, a vow to God, and he has answered you. God keeps his part. And God fixed the marriage. And the marriage is being good. And now you guys have different activities you go to on Sundays. You got the job. And that raise gives you different things to do on the weekend. You get the child. And you bring the child, the beautiful baby, and your family. And we get dressed up. And we come and Pastor Mickey says a beautiful prayer and dedicate the baby. And that's the last time we see that child in church. Lord, if you do this, I will do that. How many times have God kept his end? God has kept his promises. And two years later, we are back to where we are with a new prayer, trying to make a new vow. Let's try to be like Hannah. 
and keep our word. You know why? He keeps his. He cannot lie. He has never lied and he will never lie. His word is true. When he blesses you with something, dedicate it back up to him. That way he can keep it and prosper it. Because it was he who gave it to you. You couldn't do it on your own, remember? You can have it on your own. There's nothing you could have done except pray. And he gave it to you. Appreciate what God is going to do for you. Some of you are going to get it. You're going to get what you've been waiting for. You're going to get that void. It's going to be filled and it's going to happen soon. What are you going to do with it? Give it back to God. Say, Lord, I thank you for this miracle. Lord, I thank you for hearing me. Lord, I thank you for sending it. Lord, I thank you for your provision. Here it is, Lord. Take it and protect it. Now, Hannah, we're almost finished here. Hannah was in the temple praying. Her heart was troubled. And she was sitting there, shaking and mumbling and crying. And Eli, the high priest, said, why, why are you drunk? This woman is in the worst emotional pain and situation in her life. And here's a high priest making an assumption that he knows nothing about. Why are you drunk? No, 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 master. No, no, no. Your servant is not drunk. My heart is troubled. We must learn not to assume when we don't understand what is going on in some people's lives. We see people come to church on Sundays, and maybe just because they, God forbid, they didn't mean to, they just pass by you and didn't say hi, and now you think that person has an issue with you. When that person haven't slightly thought about you for two seconds, but now you have something against that person because they didn't compliment your dress. Don't judge other people by your understanding because you don't know what that individual is going through. You don't know what kind of week they had. You don't know the pressure they've been having at home. You don't know their mental state. You don't know. And she sat there and she cried. But I want to encourage you something. The same way Eli the high priest was watching her. One greater than Eli sees you when you're down on your knees, when you're by yourself in your office, when you're by yourself behind that steering wheel driving and the tears are flowing, when you go home and you can't talk and you shut the door and you start to offload on him and tears are just coming and you're begging him and you're talking to him. He sees that. And he knows what you're going through. He knows. And the Bible said after that, Hannah got what she asked for. She went from barrenness to belittle to bless. I don't know what stages you are at now, but guess what? It's a stage. No matter if you're in the beginning, the middle, or you're coming to the end, you're going to go through it. You're going to get through it if you're dedicated to God. If you say, Lord, I can't handle this no more. Lord, I need your help. And Lord will help you if you make that vow and you keep that promise. And I'm closing and I want to close with this. God did something greater for us than he did for Hannah. Next week, we celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. God loves you so much that he knows there's some things you can't handle. He knows because of sin, we were going for a downward spiral. And he said, you know what I'm going to do for you? I'm going to give you my son. He said, I am going to send my son because my son could save the world. You're going to need my son. 
Because of my son, there is power in his name. Because of my son, demons will have to flee. Because of my son, sickness will cure up. Because of my son, that's what I'm going to do for you. I'm going to give you more than you asked for. I'm going to give you my son. I'm going to send him in there. And Mary dedicated Jesus back to God. And Jesus is the reason that we can face anything today. Jesus is the name you say when you pray. Jesus is the name you call when you want to cry. Jesus is the name you scream when things are happening. Jesus is the name you say when you're in pain. Jesus is the name. Amen. Hallelujah. Bow your heads. I want to close. and I want to say a prayer. If you feel that you are in a barren situation... If you feel that you're being belittled, being bullied, if you feel that God is not hearing you, if you're tired of seeing other people's lives played out in front of you and the things you want are not happening, I want you to think about that situation, what you need right now. Visualize it. And I want you to talk to God. I want you to say, Lord, I'm going to make a promise. Lord, if you do this for me, Sunday, December 18th, 2022, I will give it back to you and bless it. And I will keep it, oh Lord. I will keep my part. Whatever it is you asked for just now, remember you have a part to play in it too. Lord, I lift your children before you. Lord, the 60, 70, 75 of us here, you heard their prayer. You are not confused by more than one prayer. You've heard it clearly. You know what they have asked for. You know what they have been longing for. You know the situation, oh God. Lord, I pray, oh God, and I beg and I plead that if you would only look down on us, oh God, look at the misery, at the hurt, at the waiting, oh God. Look this way. Look at deeper life this morning. Look at this congregation, oh God. Look. And hear, oh God. Deliver, oh God. Send it, oh God. Send it, oh Jesus. I thank you. I bless you, oh Father. Let the people of God believe.